Hi, Roy Huntington here. Welcome to another First Look. Are you stymied by how to get better accuracy out of your small frame revolver like this? Well, guess what? The revolver is plenty accurate, but what's the secret to have them shoot up to what they're capable of shooting? You know, I absolutely love these small frame revolvers. <laughs> I've got a 1955 era uh, Smith & Wesson J-frame, a Model 36, a very early gun. Uh, this is sort of the gun that wrote the book on these, uh, these small frame revolvers. Uh, this is a Colt Cobra, which is also one of my favorite small frame guns. This holds six shots and this holds five shots, but both of them seem to suffer from something, and I hear this from readers regularly, and that is that that darn small revolver of mine just isn't accurate like my bigger guns. Well, except one thing. Yes, it is. Now, I know you might find that hard to believe, but actually it's absolutely the truth. Uh, this is a gun that I carry regularly. It's a Smith & Wesson 340 PD. It's real ultra lightweight. I've got some bow and custom bigger sights on it since I can't see anymore since I've gotten old. But as surprising as it is, the barrel length really has nothing to do with the accuracy other than it does shorten your sight radius, which can make things a bit more challenging. The real secret to making these guns shoot is the trigger manipulation. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? All right, I've cleared the gun here so you could see it's unloaded. And what I mean is that uh, you see people at the range and they frequently will just go bang, 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 bang. Well, what's happening right there? The gun's jumping all over the place and you're not gonna get any accuracy doing that. You have to treat these little guns just like you'd treat a full-size revolver, only even more carefully and pay even closer attention to that all-important double action trigger press. Okay, so here's that original Smith & Wesson J-frame. It's cleared. And I had to move in tight here because I wanted you to understand exactly what's happening here. When you manipulate the trigger of a double action revolver, uh, even one that doesn't have a uh, exposed hammer on it, and I'll explain that in a second, what you need to do is you need to stage the trigger. And by staging the trigger, I mean just this. Now watch carefully. You'll slowly begin the pull, and then the cylinder indexes, and then right before the hammer falls is when you press particularly slowly and carefully until the hammer falls. And so what you're doing here, because it's a double action revolver, you're cocking the hammer by pulling the trigger initially, and then sort of the secondary press toward the end, you're actually letting go of the hammer's sear. So you've got a double action press which cocks the hammer and then drops the hammer right at the very end. And so you're kind of shooting it single action. All you're doing though is you're cocking the hammer first. Now let me help illustrate something that's important and a lot of people don't really see this. This gun has a hammer in it exactly like this gun has a hammer. Now the hammer in the 340 PD is shaped slightly differently. However, when you manipulate the trigger, you're still cocking the internal hammer initially, and then at the end of the trigger press, then you're dropping it from the double action sear, which is exactly what you're doing when you can see the hammer cock on this gun. Now I'm gonna tell you a couple other secrets. To index the double action trigger, you can cheat. And what I mean by that is, first of all, after 10,000 manipulations, your finger's going to kind of know, uh, it's just about time to let off right about now, and it does. However, another way to cheat is, you can actually use the inside of the pad of your finger to index on the side of the uh, gun right here. So as you pull the trigger, and I like to get a lot of trigger finger in there so you're nice and strong. As you manipulate the trigger, there's a point that the pad of your finger will touch a bit of wood or a bit of grip or your other finger. And then you'll know it's just about time to trip that sear and you can take extra time. Well, fortunately, I've got plenty of help here because the chickens keep coming over to see what I'm doing. Uh, let's run through a trigger pull, though, just so you can see this clearly. I'm going to get in nice and tight so you can see what's going on. So you begin the pull. Uh, Smith & Wesson revolvers have two clicks. When the second click occurs, 
you know you're just about ready to drop the hammer keep pressing slowly carefully smoothly and then the gun will fire so some other revolvers colts uh, taurus rugers they may not have the same kind of a clicking and indexing however you can still develop that finger muscle memory and still feel the pad of your finger touching the gun or the grip just before that secondary let off appears so i'll do it one more time you ready here we go start the pull and i've done this a lot so i know you can bring it back quite a bit and then slow squeeze 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 and the gun fires and if you notice the front sights not dancing around doing the jig and that's what you need to make these guns accurate okay so remember the goal here to have your small frame revolver be as accurate as possible is to make sure the muzzle doesn't do the macarena right when you pull the trigger and to help illustrate that let me show you what happens uh, watch the muzzle and i'm going to jerk the trigger do you see that movement we just missed the target now let's do it again, only this time stage the trigger, press smoothly, and the hammer falls, and you notice the muzzle is much more still. And that's the secret to get these guns to shoot like that proverbial laser beam. Now these little guns are all about defensive use, all about pocket carry, all about being the gun at hand uh, when the elephant charges into the room. And to show you just what they can do, what I'd like to do is go ahead and uh, shoot this uh, live on camera. I'll set things up so you can see the bullets hitting the target, see me shooting the gun, and uh, we'll put a target up at about, it's going to be about 12 or 15 yards. But I will show you what you're able to do if you take your time. Okay, we're set up here at uh, 15 yards. It's actually about 14 and a little bit. And uh, I've got five shots of uh, 38 Special Wad Cutters. Uh, in the model 340 PD. There's another camera up there uh, to score hits in case you're like me and you can't see very well. Uh, so let's shoot five shots and uh, see what happens. So. Well, I pulled that one, but I think you get the point here. If you take your time, stage the trigger and be smooth, these guns will shoot just fine. Well, actually, <laughs> that was so much fun. I want to do it again, but this time we're going to use the uh, Colt Cobra. So this is a lightweight gun, uh, five shots. Now, I haven't shot this gun in years, so let's see what happens. Well, that first shot kind of caught me off guard. A Colt's action kind of rolls off a lot differently than a Smith & Wesson, but you could still stage it. So uh, obviously it shoots just a tad high at this range, but overall though, I think this would still get the job done. Well, all that shooting scared the chickens away finally. Hey, if you love these little guns as much as I do and you have one, dust it off and take it to the range and practice that very careful, very controlled double action trigger press. And I think you'll be amazed at really what kind of a Star Trek phaser laser you actually have in your hands. So, hey, until the next time, remember the four firearm safety rules. See you then.